good morning. 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 And uh, God has been so good. Amen. Amen. We want to go over our prayer list this morning. We would like for you to continue to pray for Sister Dorothy. She needs a physical healing up in her body. Sister Fran, she needs uh, physical healing and strength. Yeah. Good to have her this morning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sister Cheryl, who needs physical healing. Sister Sandy needs strength and Continue praying for her husband Charles, the uh, healing, and grandson Ethan. Have you heard any more about the... Uh, he had court again, and they postponed it. <coughs> All right. So let's, let's continue praying for her, for uh, her family, her grandson. Uh, continue praying for Sister Kathy. She's not unable to be with us this morning. Uh, continue praying for her niece and her husband Chet. Uh, a little more for God to open a door. We're believing for that. Sister Jerry needs a healing for her back. Sister Linda, sister, brother, and niece, healing. Sister Colleen, healing. And co-worker whose grandbaby Riley continue healing for her, her kidneys. Brother Tim, sister, Alzheimer's healing. And salvation for his family. And they got a family, and we know the family in Kentucky. Continue praying for this family. Yes. Sister Meyer needs a healing. Brother Vaughn has a brother needs salvation. Yes, yes. Uh, Sister Vicki and Sister Kathy and Sister Lydia from the Marian Church. I don't know what that static's from. But uh, they need uh, healing and strength and salvation. Uh, Sister Dolores needs a healing. This is somebody that Sister... Uh, uh, goes to a, a Kent church. Sister Linda knows all about this situation. Let's continue praying for a couple of teachers, one in Lima and one in Philly, has cancer. And we're believing for God to heal. Continue praying for Brother Bob's co worker brother. Continue healing there. And Brother Bob needs a touch on his body. Yeah, yeah. Dawson, there's a tumor on the right healing, on his heart that needs a healing. We've got a, a daughter in law. They need salvation, and we're just trusting the act. So we got some family, kids that need saved. Uh, Brother Larry, continue praying for him, his knee. Sister Shannon, continue praying for her. Good to see her this morning. We need to pray for the church. <clears throat> that God will send in the lost. Yes, and he will send us more anointed uh, musicians and singers. Amen. And there's a young man... Uh, he's a sophomore at the Arlington School. Uh, he's on uh, uh, our grandson's basketball team. And yesterday morning, when they were going through a walkthrough, uh, he had a head concussion back in football a few a couple months ago. And I don't know what happened. They don't know what happened either. He's down in Children's Hospital, uh, Cincinnati Children's Hospital right now. Uh, he had a seizure yesterday, and uh, he's, he's only 15 years old. So uh, uh, it, it kind of affected the whole basketball team like yesterday afternoon. So let's continue praying for him. Let's continue praying for Israel. Lift up Israel. Amen. That God will uh, continue to protect them. Pray for our nation. Pray for our president and those in government. We are, we are to pray for them. And uh, take them before the Lord. Is there any other spoken request this morning? Okay. All righty. Continue praying for Brother Owen. Also, I want to thank everybody for praying for me. I had that sister who off my face last week. I don't get pathology and come back to Tuesday. We're believing. We're believing. Continue praying for Brother Phil. Brother Phil wasn't able to be here this morning, so continue praying. He's uh, a blessing, you know, playing that harmonica. So we, we, we do uh, appreciate him being here. Sister uh, Aunt Garnet's doing better. She hasn't been passing out for days. All right, continue praying for Sister Garnet. Anyone else? Amen. Unsaved loved ones or any unspoken requests by lifting up your hand. Let's go before the Lord, Brother Bob. Come down and help me and let's uh, pray and believe this morning, each and every one of us, that God is going to move and He 
he is moving upon these and that we're going to see some results. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come right now. In the name of Jesus, we bring them before you again. Asking you, dear Lord, for salvation. Asking you for healing. Asking you for strength. Asking you to open doors that no man can open. Close doors that no man can close. And Lord, we pray for Israel. We believe, dear God, these are your chosen people. And Lord, put a put hedge about them, protect them. And Lord, we pray for our nation, our president. Lord, we pray this morning, dear God, that you're going to move. We believe for a good result for Brother Bond. And Lord, we believe right now, dear Lord, by your stripes, we are made whole. And we thank you already, dear Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do, dear God. And we're believing it this morning. And we're standing firm on your word. And God, we just give you a praise. And Lord, those unable to be here this morning, dear God, that you move and be with them. And Brother Owen, dear Lord, touch him, dear Lord. Heal his body, dear God. Sister Dolores, dear Lord, you know the need of each and every one of you, God. And we ask you, dear Lord, to move. We thank you already for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand, Bob, and pray for that. Amen. I'm a firm believer on healing, folks. I'm a firm believer in salvation. Yes. Amen. If you've never seen anybody healed or nobody saved, look up here. Amen. Amen. Come on. We are saved this morning by His merciful grace and the yes. price that He paid upon that cross for us. Amen. What a price He paid. Amen. So we're going to sing this morning and we're going to plead the blood again. When I see the blood. Amen. I will pass. That's what the word the, the word says. Yes. That's what the Lord said. He said, if I see the blood, I will pass over thee. Amen. Let's sing it this morning. Amen. Will Christ our Redeemer die on the cross?
thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away every sin. Amen. Come on, church. We ought to be shouting this morning. Oh,
Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I was teasing. Sister Fran and I, we tease each other. And uh, I was talking to her before the, the, the day before the funeral <coughs> that, e that evening. And, and uh, we was talking about the message preaching. And I, I said, uh, she said, just don't make it a long one. Then I said, okay. And yesterday I asked her, I said, do you want that message football time? A regular time. <laughs> the five minutes of football time could be at, at, at 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> amen. And then we had a beautiful service on uh, uh, Friday. Amen. And uh, uh, I just was just led by the Lord. Led by the Lord. And I believe that, that James is in God's hands. Amen. He's a merciful God. Yes, he He's a loving God. Yes. And as I told the folks there Friday, I believe that when I walked in there, I walked in there that day to, on a mission that uh, God cleared James's mind to understand and hear everything that I, that God wanted him to do. Yes. Amen. I believe God can do that. Amen. Amen. I believe that moment yes. God cleared his mind yes. so he could hear what God wanted me to do. And after that, you know, I don't know what happened, but God is a merciful God. And I stand firm on that. Amen. Amen. That, you know, I believe, I believe today. I believe today. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Yes. Amen. I'm not here to question God. I'm just here to worship Him and believe in Him. Amen. Amen. And I believe that God moved upon that situation. And God is He's a merciful, loving God. Yes, yes. Amen. Church, we just don't want to sing about it. We just don't want to uh, uh, talk about it. But we need to serve Him. Amen. We need to serve Him. And we, uh, Sister Angela, received a text, I believe yesterday, from someone that wanted us to remember uh, 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 Brother Martin. It was uh, Sister B, or Sister Gracie, would have been in the hospital about this time last, uh, a few years ago. I think it's been about three years now, something like that, and uh, two or three years, and uh, so, you know, he was, uh, that was hitting home with him, <coughs> amen. I, I, let me say something, folks, you know, we've got some great warriors that's going home to be with the Lord up on the wall, there. and uh, I told the folks Friday, you know, they can take our loved ones away from us, but they can't take our memories. Amen. Hang on to those memories, yes. the precious memories, yes. amen, of your loved ones. Hang on to them until we leave and to be with them forever and ever. Amen. Just hang on to them and God will bless you. Amen. Sister Linda, you got a song this morning. God will bless us.
Yeah. Give the Lord a good hand. Praise. You know, there's going to get a lot of folks who are going to see there. But most of all, we're going to see Jesus. The one that paid the great price for our redemption. Amen. Amen. Beautiful song, beautiful song. Let's receive your tithes and offerings this morning. Give the Lord a wonderful hand. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, dear God. For your love and your mercy. Thank you, dear Lord, for that great price that you paid on the cross for our redemption. Yeah. And it's all about faith, dear Lord. And God, as we come to this part of the service, we ask you to bless the givers. Yes. Bless those that are able to give, dear God. And we just give you praise thank and give you glory. We thank you for it all right now. And bless bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You got some offering to give, give it to the Lord. He'll bless you.
walked into the church over there in Finley. She had found a home to be at. And she always tells me, I'm one in a million. <laughs> one in a million. <laughs> Don't know what the million is, but I'm one in a million. And uh, we love Sister Fran very dearly. And uh, I want to sing this song for you this morning. Amen. There's an altar where I go. Yeah. 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 I believe that she's found that altar many years ago. Yeah. And I believe she's still praying today. And she can find him and be in his presence. Hallelujah. Well, there's an altar where I go.
As I have said unto thee this day, I say it again. I long to be with thee, and I desire to be with thee. There is a day coming when thou will be with me forever and ever. I say unto thee, hang on to that hope, hang on to that faith, hang on to it, dear, my children, for I am coming, and I am coming quickly, and I'm coming back after those that are looking for my coming. And I say unto thee, I I long to be with you, for I am the Lord thy God. So take me to a place of
So if you got your Bibles, turn with me, if you would, in your 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I want to start with the very first verse and read down to verse 8. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 4. You there? Say amen. Amen. The Bible reads, and this is uh, Paul, he's talking to Timothy. He said, I charge ye there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the living, and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with long, all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things in their afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist, make proof, full proof of thy ministry. For Paul said, For I am ready, now ready to be offered in the time of my departure as a hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. And for there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord thy righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his up here. Amen. Amen. Brother Bob, Amen. would you take us before the Lord this morning in prayer, would you please? Heavenly Father, we come with full of grace once again, Lord. The Lord, as Paul was pouring out his heart to Timothy here, and yes. bless my extension, Lord. We pray, God, Lord, that we will fight the good fight of faith, God, and stand in the gap, God. Lord, we pray for our pastor today, God, that you'd anoint him with the message of the hour, God. Touch it today, Father. Touch our hearts, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said amen, amen. and amen. There was an evangelist who once ended a revival meeting in Chicago. By he, when he got, before he dismissed, he, he was advising the unbelievers who were present that night to go home and seriously consider the claims of the gospel. Then he said, return on the following night prepared to make a decision for Christ. But on that same night, October the 8th, 1871, the tragic Chicago fire yes. broke out. And before it was finally extinguished, nearly four miles of buildings yes. were just consumed along with 250 human fatalities. And the evangelist then vowed never to end a service without giving an invitation to accept Christ immediately. The question as to when we should share our faith is directly tied to when a sinner should accept Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible is clear that God's accepted time is today. Come on. Hebrews 3 and 15 says, While it is said today, if you will hear His voice, and hearken not your hearts, as in the provocation. The reason for this is very simply, church. A sinner has no assurance whatsoever that he will live to see tomorrow. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because the Bible said in Proverbs 21 and 7, or 27 and 1, He said, Boast not yourself of tomorrow, for you know not what a day may bring forth. In other words, church, a Christian should not boast, period. Because the rich fool of Luke <coughs> chapter 12 and verse 20 boasted of tomorrow. But that night his soul was required of him. Not all fools are poor. Some are rich. Yeah. Get that. 
Thus, we are to witness anytime, all the time, yes. any place, yes. and in all places. Amen. The Apostle Paul shows us how this should be done. He witnesses everywhere. He witnessed in, in a prison at midnight. And even on a sinking ship during a dark and stormy day, he witnessed. As Paul neared the end of his life, he could confidently, confidently say he had been faithful to his call. Yes. Thus he faced his death calmly, knowing that he would be rewarded one day by Christ. The good news, church, this morning is that the heavenly reward is not just for giants of the faith. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Like Paul, but for all who are eagerly looking forward to the Jesus' second coming. I don't know about you. How many is looking for him? I believe this could be the day, church. I don't know. I'm not God. Amen. But I'm looking for his coming. I know I've read the book many a different times. I know he's coming. Amen. Yes. And I got my eyes looking to him. Yes. Amen. Come on, church. My name is written down in the book of life, and nothing can take it out of there but me. Amen. 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 So here, Paul gives these words to encourage Timothy. We studied this a few months ago. 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. But these words of encouragement Timothy gave encouraged Timothy. Not only he's encouraging Timothy, but he's encouraging us. Yes, amen. That no matter how difficult the fight seems, keep fighting. Amen. We will discover when we are with Jesus Christ that it was worth it all. Amen. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, preach the word. Yeah. Preach the word. And that's what I want to share with you this morning about titling this message, Sharing Your Faith. So preach the word. How am I going to share my faith? Amen. Is preach the word. The word. Amen. The word says sin is wrong. We got to tell them. Amen. Amen. My faith. I got to share my faith. As I, as I did that day when I walked into that nursing home with Brother James in there, I went in there on a mission to share my faith with him and let him know that Jesus Christ is the only answer. I'm here to tell you there's no other way but Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. So we, not only the Apostle Paul was told or told Timothy to share his faith, but he said, preach the word. When you and I preach the word, we are sharing our faith. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Now watch this. Let me help you this morning. He said in verses 1 and 2, he says, I charge thee there before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick, the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He said, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with long, all long suffering and doctrine. Here, Timothy, Timothy had a heavy responsibility. Uh -huh. Come on. On his shoulders. We got a bit, we got a responsibility on our shoulders. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially in the view of the fact that many had departed from the true doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I was told here a while back, I won't say who it is. Amen. Someone told me, I don't want to, I don't really want to work for the Lord because I don't want to be required to do anything. That's a wrong answer. That's a wrong statement. You're required already. Amen. When you say yes to Jesus Christ, you are required already. Come on, church. Amen. Nobody want to work for the Lord. They want to sit back. Amen. That's another message. Paul was careful. He was careful to emphasize that in the last days, actually the days that we are now living in, amen, yes. that all of the world will come to a head. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Timothy, along with every other preacher who has ever lived, will one day stand before the judge and give account what he has or she has preached. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. I'm going to give account to what I preach behind this pulpit. Brother Bob, Sister Myra, Brother Bob, each 
and every one. Come on. When we go out beyond these four walls, what we say to the people out there, we will be accountable for it. So what I'm saying today is share your faith with them and preach the word of God to them. The passage tells us that both the dead and the living will ultimately face judgment. But the redeemed are gathering in. We'll be judged differently than the unredeemed. Somebody all somebody I shout now. All the sins of the redeemed were judged in Christ at the cross of Calvary, which means that no believer will ever have to face those sins again. That's right. Amen. Come on, church. He paid for my past, my present, and my future sins. Amen. Come on, church. That don't give me a license to continue to go out of your sin. Paul said, God forbid. Amen. But I'm here to tell you that I, I, there's no record, Brother Tell. There's no record. It's been washed away. And we got to share that to the people out there and tell them that Jesus Christ is the answer. People will say, well, you did this, you did that. I don't care if they stand before God. God's going to look at them and say, I have no record of it. Right. Huh? Paul gives these words to encourage Timothy and us. We will, the judgment the believer will have to undergo, now watch this, is one's stewardship. What do you mean? In other words, how one lived this life on earth as it regards the work of the Lord. Yeah. Huh? That's the only thing He's going to judge me on. What have you done with Jesus? Yeah. Come on, church. Amen. The work that we are to doing right here on this earth. Amen. This will be the judgment of Christ. The wicked dead and the unredeemed will be judged at the great white throne judgment. Jesus Christ is today our Savior, but if rejected, He will then be our judge. Yes. Amen. Amen. We, are, we are told to preach the gospel, yes. which is the only hope of dying humanity today. Timothy is to preach the word. That means us. Yes. We are not to tickle ears. Yes. But preach the word. Yes. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 1 and 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to unto us, which are saved. It is the power of God. Amen. Come on. It is the power of God. We've got the power this morning, church. His word is powerful yeah. this morning. Yes, it is. He said, be instant in season and out of season. Yes. This means that the preacher is to proclaim the word when the time is favorable and also when the circumstances, uh, circumstances seem unfavorable. Sure. It means there is no closed season for preaching. That's right. huh? I'm on vacation. <laughs> Amen. I'm taking a couple months off. No, huh? Come on. No retirement. Next week I'm not going to be here. Brother Bob's going to take over. I'm going to take about two months off and I'll be back. <laughs> I ain't going to preach for a while. Uh, I ain't going to I ain't going to stand before you guys. Yeah. I'm going to stand before God. Right. Amen. There is no cold season. It's not like deer hunting. You can only hunt for a few months. Amen. Preaching is a lifetime job. Amen. And you've been called to be the disciples. Amen. I'm trying to disciple you this morning for you to go out and share your faith and yeah. tell them about Jesus Christ yeah. and preach the word to them. Amen. How are we going to build a church for God? Come on, man. Amen. Amen. He said, preach, be incident season and out of season. 
Paul says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all <laughs> long suffering and doctrine. Tells us that the reproving and the rebuking must be done with gentleness. Yes, Lord. As well, the long suffering refers to a gentleness that continues. Uh -huh. Even when the message is met with rejection. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. Come on now, now, now. Look up, look up here now. There are many of us, you've talked to somebody and they've rejected your word and you just want to, ugh. Ugh. Uh, come on now, I don't see no halos. The word will be rejected. Not everybody's going to accept it. Amen. Sister Sandy, when you was handing out those papers, amen, to people, I'm sure that not every one of them said, praise God. I'm sure some of them will run a trash can and dumped it. Huh? Why? Because they don't reject it. But it don't matter, church. You plant the seed. Yeah. And God and Brother Tim said, yeah. He will do the watering. Yeah. He's the living water. He will give it. Come on, church. Yeah. We are just to preach it. We are to share our faith. Amen. And preach the word. Here. This is what Paul means by preaching the word. Such pre preaching will not win popularity contests. It will not bring admire and applause. However, it will get people saved and lives changed. Yeah. Huh? Those were preaching the word. Yeah. Amen. He said, verses 3 and 4. He said, when the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Amen. Church, these are ears which are always pricking with an uneasy desire for what would gratify the taste of a carnal self-willed heart. Hearers of, these types, of this type have rejected the truth and prefer the great lie. Come on. What the people desire and what the false teachers give them gratifies their pride. Yeah. We are living in those days right now and a lot of people don't realize it at all. Those who follow these false teachers not only turn away their ears from the truth, but see to it that their ears are always in, this, in such a position that they will never come in contact with the truth. Huh? Not only do they have their ears turned, but they want to make sure they never hear the truth. Yeah. Come on, church. Fables. When he said fables means they have rejected the truth. Mm -hmm. Which means the truth is available and, and is available and have instead opted for the lie. If it's not Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the message of the cross, it is a fable fiction. This means that the church is by large filled with fables. Come on. They're not preaching Christ and Him crucified. They're not preaching the message of the cross. Not telling people about Jesus. Amen. That church is nothing is filled with nothing but a bunch of fables. Paul said in verse 5, he said, watch thou, watch, and all things, and your affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make proof of thy ministry. The word of God must not be compromised in any fashion, church. We must constantly watch and listen to what is being preached and taught is actually what should be preached and taught in fact. This great gospel which has been handed down to us. I am not to watch as to whether other men like what I preach. Come on, that's not what Paul's saying. I'm not, I'm not here to watch what other people think, say, or do. But rather I am to watch as it respects what God wants me to preach. Say or do. Amen? 
Not what people want. Yeah, come on. Amen. Yeah. Thank God I've never, never, well, I, what time? Someone said, you ought to preach on that. I won't, I won't, I won't say who it was. It just, actually, it's been probably about two months ago, three months ago, I got a phone call. <laughs> Someone was sharing something with me about the banks. They said, you know how to preach on that. Well, there was nothing to preach on. <laughs> but all my ministry, I've never had anybody go up, up to me and say, you need to preach this. Quit preaching on that. And I know, I know there's some people who don't like to hear the message of the cross. I can name a couple names right now and you know, just know who this person is. But we are to watch as it respects what God wants. Amen. Huh? I'm not here to tell Brother Bob. I'm not here to tell Sister Meyer. I'm not here to tell Brother Bob what to preach. Amen. They all three know we preach Christ and Him crucified Amen. in His church. Amen. Amen. What God gives them to preach, they'll bring it out to us. Yes. Amen. Just like He did that last Sunday morning. Amen. I didn't know what I was going to preach. I hadn't even thought about it. When I read a few of those scriptures, I said over there that God, the Holy Ghost, kept dealing with me as Brother Bob was preaching. So I went home that day and I read some and then the rest of the week, Sister Sandy, I started studying and, and believing that this is what God wants us to bring out. He wants us to share our faith. Amen. Don't hold it in. Don't be a hoarder of it. But share your faith and preach the Word of God. He said, we are to endure afflictions. Uh-oh. Which carries the ideal of not allowing hardships difficulties or troubles to hinder one caring for for one's ministry. Amen? Don't worry about what people said. Just carry the word. Just preach the word. The idea is if the preacher truly preaches the gospel, truly seeks to follow the Lord in all things, Satan, now watch, Satan is going to do everything within his power to hinder such a one. Satan fights the cross. As he fights nothing else. If he can get the believer to concentrate or uh, concentrate his faith elsewhere, come on, he doesn't really care what elsewhere is. If he knows that such direction will bring defeat. Amen. He doesn't want, oh come on, church. He doesn't want you and I to go out here to share our faith. He wants us to keep quiet. He wants us to talk, talk about other things. He don't want us to talk about the cross. When we start talking about the cross, all oh, hell shakes. Come on, church. Yeah. And when you start mentioning Jesus Christ, hell shakes. Yeah. And then the devil trembles. But when we start uh, talking about other things and the false doctrines is out there and bringing out false doctrine, he'll, come on, church, he'll direct us in another path. He doesn't want us to be that way. Huh? Come on. This is why... Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is why the church is not full today. People will not accept the message of the cross. They will not accept Christ and Him crucified. Come on. They're going after other things. We just read it. They will not heed to sound doctrine. Amen. They want you to tickle their ear. Well, if you want me to tickle your ear, I'll hand a feather to you every day, every service. Tickle your own ear. Paul told Timothy, he said, do the work of an evangelist. Refers to the third of the five-fold callings. There's nowhere in the Bible that it tells evangelists or any other callings to deliver people. We are instead preach deliverance. He said, make proof of thy ministry. Means to cause a thing to be shown to the full. To carry through to the end. Or to fully perform. The proof is, is in what is preached. Which brings forth results. Amen. Huh? Jesus warned of false prophets. 
He said in Matthew 7 and 20, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Come on, church. The proof is souls being saved. Yes. Believers being baptized with the Holy Ghost. The sick being healed and the people being delivered from all types of bondages. Under a true ministry, saints will grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said in verses 6 and 7, I'm trying to hurry. He said, for I am now ready to be offered. Paul said, the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept thy faith. Now, the Holy Spirit has already told Paul that the time of, of his departure has come. Yeah. However, that time did not come until his work was finished. Yeah. But yet he strongly proclaims to Timothy the fact that the gospel must not be weakened or compromised in the least degree. Paul was about ready to leave his physical body and forsake this earth for the presence of his Lord. How many can say when they come to the end, as Paul was able to say, I'm ready. I'm ready. When Paul said, have finished, refers to crossing the finish line and is now resting at the goal. His life's work is over. Paul had been given the new covenant. He had been faithful to the message. Yeah. He had been faithful to take this message. And not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles as well. He was the master builder of the church. And he did everything within his power to push this gospel to the furthest ends of the earth of the day. Setting the stage for this gospel to be claimed to all over the world. Guess what, church? He was setting it for us. Amen. Huh? For us to go out and to share our faith yes. and preach the word. Of God. Paul said, I have kept the faith. Yes. Kept means to keep by guarding. His work of safeguarding that truth is now at an end. He is like a soldier, Brother Bob was in the, in the military, wasn't he, right? He is like a soldier and grown old into the service of his country and is waiting for his discharge. To sum it up, the faith is Jesus Christ in Him crucified. He said in verse 8, He says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them who love His appearing. Meaning those who place their faith in Jesus. Yeah. Those who are sharing their faith about Jesus. Those that are preaching the word of God to those about their faith in Jesus. Come on church. Someone should be shouting about right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Somebody ought to be happy this morning. Yeah. He said it not to me only. But unto all them also that love his appearing. Paul says that a crown awaits me. Yeah. Huh? The Lord, the righteous judge, was ready to re award his prize to Paul at the end of the race, his victorious life. The same reward awaits all who run the Christian race successfully to the finish and who long for his appearing, meaning the rapture of the church. Now go back to verses 3 and 4 with me. I want to read those. I'll get right close. He said, for the time will come. We are there. 
when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. We are there right now. We've been there for a while. But I read in the Bible where Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 24, he warned us, there shall be, there shall rise a false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Huh? That's why we got to share our faith and preach the doctrine. Yes, preach the word. Second, Thess uh, Second Thessalonians 2 and 3, Paul said, Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man, that man of sin is revealed, be revealed, the son of perdition. We are there. Then in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, Paul says, Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall some depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Jesus told us in John 14 and 6, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What am I saying? We are to share our faith. Yes. Amen. And we are to preach the word. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because church, it's sad. There are so many preachers, if you want to call them, and I say that lightly, out there pre preaching false doctrine. Yes. And it's deceiving people and people are believing that word. Huh? And Jesus says, warns us, be careful. Be careful. They'll go after itching ears. Huh? Come on. I'm just going to step out, out right now. We've had them here in this church that went, left. Even over Philly, they left and went after itching ears. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to heed to sound doctrine. Right. Come on. I want to do my thing. Well, go ahead and do your thing. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. Amen. 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 Uh, that's Amen. a better reward than what Amen. you're doing. Huh? I want to hear him say, well done, Sister Sandy. I want to hear him say that one of his days. Yes. Well done. Yes. Amen. You got up and he's keeping a record right now. Amen to me. Did you preach my word? Yes, Lord. I'm preaching your word. Amen. Pour it on me. Give me uh, your word to preach. Yeah. Give it to me to preach, Lord. Amen. Every week when I am able to preach, amen, by somebody else is a preacher, give them the word. Yeah. Give them yeah. the word to preach. Yeah. Amen. We got to preach the word. Amen. Behind the floor. We got to be instant, church. We got to be ready. Amen. We're not on vacation. That's right. Amen. amen. Oh, you got to be ready. <laughs> Be ready. As I felt Saturday evening, I just thought, Lord, I, I don't have a strip. I just, I'm tired. I, I just don't feel good. I called Brother Bob. He said, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, church. Be ready. Right. Be ready. I mean, you don't have to be called to be a pastor. You don't have to be called to be an evangelist. You don't have to be called to, amen, to uh, preach. We have all are called to preach the word. You're, you're a disciple of Christ. Huh? Come on, you're not going to stand God before me. You're going to stand before God for what we say and do. Amen? And I want to be I want to be one that stands behind this pulpit and preach the Word. As God is my witness, as I, I, I read those few scriptures before Brother Bob came on the floor, that kept burning on my soul. I know we've talked had Bible study over that. Amen. Maybe this might not have been nothing new to you, but it's refreshing that it was new to those out there that's watching. Yes. Amen. You're out there today. Share your faith. <coughs> Share your faith. <coughs> Preach the Word. <coughs> Amen. Don't compromise with the world. 
that preached the word. Amen? When I went into that nursing home, I didn't go in there to tickle Brother James's ear. I went in there for a mission. Amen? Amen? I believe God allowed it to happen. Come on, church. Amen? I believe that God, He's still in the work. healing business. Amen? He's still, as we pray over these, amen, church, don't just pray over them on Sunday morning. Amen? But tomorrow, even tonight, say, Lord, you know every need. You don't have to memorize these papers. Amen? I don't memorize them, but I know who's on there. Amen? But just take them before the Lord. Lord, you know who's on there. You know every need that needs to be healed. You know every soul that needs to be saved. And Lord, we bring them to you one more time again this evening. Lord, you are the one can do it. Not me, yeah. but you are. Amen. And go out there in that world, church, a dying world, and preach the world. Yeah. Preach the word to them. Yeah. Share your faith. Amen. Yeah. And let them know Jesus loves them. Yeah. Huh? He does. He loves them this morning. He loves you and I this morning. Amen. So we got to preach the word to them. Sister Angela, come on back, musicians. Preach the word. We gotta share. Share our faith. And this is what Paul was encouraging Timothy. Share your faith. Preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. I thank God that we've got great preachers in this church. That I can step back and, and get fed myself and, and and listen and grow. Amen. I don't all I don't want to be always behind the pulpit and preaching. I gotta get fed too. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. I gotta get fed. Amen. So, but I can. I want to encourage each and preacher in this church. Preach the word. Preach the word. Amen. No sugarcoating. Just preach it under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for your word that's been given to us. As you gave it to the Apostle Paul to share with Timothy. But oh, that he warned him that the, the time has come. Lord, oh, we're living in that day right now. They will not sound. There's so many that will not agree to the sound doctrine. They've turned away. They're going after itching ears. Somebody to tickle them say. They can sin and still be all right. No, I'm ready to be no sin in heaven. And what we do, we do it on this side of the earth. Lord, I thank you, your God, for what you've given us this day. Take it, let us take it with us this day, your Lord, and go out. Go out and share our faith. Share our faith with the lost world and preach the word. All fear is gone. Oh, side, oh, side, oh, behold the future. Let's pray, church. Is
We are to share our faith with the dying world out there. Amen. We're going to sing a Christmas carol this morning. Brother Bob, would you shut all the lights off with you, please? We're going to sing Silent Night. Somebody walked into church this morning and uh, they looked at the manger and said, somebody is taking the baby. I said, he's no longer in a manger. He's at the right hand of the Father making an intercession for you and I. He's not on the cross either. Even though you know we celebrate Christmas here in a couple weeks, Sally, it's going to be here for you now. No. It'll be a new year. But he's not in the manger. Come on. He's not on the cross. He's not even in a cold tomb. But he's alive and well. Amen. 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 So let's join together this sing it this morning. Amen.